Hello Archie students, this is your tutorial on how to create your typical wall section or essentially we're just going to copy this typical wall section. Uh, we just got done with the PowerPoint and you've learned that a typical wall section is essentially an inside view if you're cutting the house in half, the height wise, to actually look inside and see from the very bottom of the house to the very top of the house what materials are needed to create the construction of that house. Well, here we're using a very simple typical wall section so you get a basic idea how to use it. So if we go ahead and look from the bottom up, what we talked about is we'll just zoom in the bottom here. We have a few things that jump right out of us. The biggest thing is we have our eight inch by 16 inch footing. This is the footing of the house so we can't move around. We have our drain tile which is allowed for the water, a place to the water to seep in and then it moves across this drain tile which is like piping to a place that's not around the house. We also have one on the inside of the house and then also underneath the four inch concrete floor is our pea gravel connecting our eight foot foundation wall is our rebar now remember our eight foot foundation wall whatever however thick our foundation wall is our footing is going to be twice as thick so in this case our footing is a width of 16 inches meaning that our foundation wall at maximum is going to be eight inches wide on the outside of our eight inches wide is our insulation and waterproofing for the outside of the wall uh, you gotta think this is gonna be a basement so all over here is pretty much gonna be backfill the earth is gonna be backfilled back in there on the side of the house that's not gonna be exposed so we want to make sure that dirt is not touching the concrete and so moisture can't run through the concrete instead it'll hit that insulation and waterproofing barrier then on top of our concrete foundation wall we have our 2x6 treated sill plate so this is a 2x6 and it's treated with uh, usually arsenic which gives it a nice green color so we, a lot of people call them green treated uh, it is poisonous so you have to be careful but it is there as one it's going to be touching that concrete floor it could get moisture to it that, that's a way to keep it from rotting so on top of that sill plate we have a few things the first thing you're going to see is we have a 2 by 10 rim joist so we actually have a 2 by 10 that is put vertical on the outside to be a retainer for our 2 by 10 floor joist so we're just using basic 2 by 10 floor joist on top of our 2 by 10 floor joist we have a 3 quarter inch subfloor so this is just plywood you know interior plywood that we use put right on the top you know on the top of that you're going to end up putting pads and carpet or maybe you go with hardwood flooring or tile something on the top of that so then after you've covered the floor then we actually put in the start of our wall so we actually start building our walls and from the powerpoint you saw that walls start with a 2x6 this is an exterior wall so most people use 2x6 it's a 2x6 sub plate so that's our bottom plate right there some people will call it then we have moving up is our actual 2x4 our finished wall all the way to the top which is our double 2x6 top plate and we talked about the 2x6 top plate being uh, two plates that interlap. They actually hook walls together. That's what the top plate does there. It hooks walls together. You saw that on my little uh, laser engraved barn that I made. You saw how that worked. On the outside of that wall, we have our siding. So we actually have 8 inch siding. It's overlapped about 2 inches. And then moving up, uh, underneath that, on the outside of the wall, is a three-quarter inch wall sheathing. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff that actually goes inside a wall that we don't show here. We have things like our va vapor barrier that's in there. We're not too worried about this. This is your first exercise with wall sections. Outside of the wall sheathing, we have the start of our roof. And this is probably one of the most difficult portions of the wall section. So with our roof, we actually have our, this is what we call rafter construction. As you can see, it has a bird's mouth cut out of it. So this is a two by six, we call it a two by six upper cord, and it is notched right here. 
this 2 by 6 is actually notched in this corner, so it has a nice easy seat to sit down. And you saw that with the laser engraved barn again. You saw how it sits there right there, it gives it a nice boundary, can't move back and forth. Now on top of that, or I wouldn't say on top of that, but you have your 2 by 6 cord. Also connected to that is the 2 by 6 lower cord, and then webbing. And those connect your rafters and your uh, lower cord together to create your roof structure. And on the bottom here, we have our pretty much our clo our closing, our end of our roof, our overhang with the actual wall. So this overhang, if we measure it, let's see what it actually measures here. difficult to get here so there's where I want to go to and go parallel here so we're at about about a 16 or I'm sorry an 18 inch overhang there so this is about an 18 inch overhang and that is to give us a soffit and you know kind of pretties up the house a little bit so the roof doesn't end right with the outside wall it looks very weird like that so when you have the roof overlap once again it looks nice but now you've got to kind of close in this open corner that you just created so we do that by putting a piece of rough fascia on there this is a 2x6 rough fascia and then we actually have metal soffit and fascia so it's actually metal usually that goes on the outside it can be wood but for the most part people use metal these days that will actually go on the outside and underneath it. And the soffit will actually have a little cut sometimes going through it. It's not two pieces, this is just a cut. There's sometimes holes in the soffit to allow airflow to get to the inside, to the attic, so um, hot air can flow out, cool air can flow in, so it keeps a lot less moisture from building up in that attic. Uh, we also, so that's 1 16th of an inch fascia. Uh, it might be a little bit thicker, maybe a little bit thinner, but generally that's what we use. Uh, on the corner, I don't have it drawn in, but on the corner there's going to be something called a drip edge. I kind of have it drawn in there, I guess, a little bit. But we have drip edge, which will keep the rain when it comes down, or the snow or sleet, whatever hits the roof. So it actually drips over the soffit and does not get into any little cracks on the inside. So that's our drip edge, and then on top of our roof, we end it with about a half inch roof sheathing half inch roof sheathing goes on there and then on top of that half inch roof sheathing there's some other things like uh, we have tar paper um, sometimes ice and water paper or barrier uh, didn't put a lot of that in so we just put the roof sheathing right on top and then about eighth inch thick for shingles that can probably be actually a little bit thicker even up to a quarter of an inch for the roof shingles that would go on top of there and you can see I didn't overlap the roof shingles like they really are that can be very tedious so I just have one eighth inch shingles uh, finally a little squiggly line that's our insulation we can also do it down the finished wall here as there's going to be sheathing or uh, insulation on the outside to um, increase the heating and cooling efficiency of our house. So, and the last thing, I think I got a few other things in there. Uh, there is drywall on the inside of the house. We put some drywall on there. We actually have about half inch drywall on the top. And then let's double check the measurement here, what I put on the inside. Well, that's half inch, I believe. Um, the top is actually then three quarter inch drywall. Five eighths. So we got five eighths drywall on the top, we got half inch drywall on the sides, and then we have that three quarter inch subfloor on the bottom. So we're actually going to go ahead and attempt to recreate this typical wall section. You're going to use this when you decide to use different materials for your house. Because possibly, maybe you don't want regular overlapping siding. Maybe you want some thicker wood siding. Okay, well, you're typical wall section is going to look, look a little different. Or maybe you want brick on your house. If you want brick, you're going to have to create a brick ledge with your foundation wall. So your foundation wall might be a 
a little bit thicker to allow that brick edge. You know, the normal depth of a brick will have to sit on the top of there and go all the way up. Maybe you only want brick a certain height going up and then you want shingles the rest of the way. You can do a lot of different things with this. And if you look at the house, right now this is a typical wall section of a ranch or one story house. It's got a basement, one story. Some of you might be creating two story houses, which means at the top of this double top plate, you'll literally be starting over with another floor joist and going all the way back up to your roof again. Like I said, that's up to you. So for this project, we're just gonna start creating our wall section. You're gonna copy it, and then when you get to your house, you're gonna create your own. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. What I actually do is I have all these annotations on a different layer. So I'm actually just gonna turn these off right now, and I'm gonna create a new wall section right next to it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab my line command, and I start right from the bottom. So I'm gonna start right from the bottom, and I have my eight inch by 16 inch foundation, uh, my footing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click. I know I'm gonna move over to the right, let me turn on some snaps so it can help me out so I make sure. So I got 16 inches, got 8 inches high, 16 inches, and then back together. All right, so there is my footing. That's pretty easy. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to draw up for my foundation wall. Uh, remember, foundation wall is actually right in the middle, so that means there are if this is 8 inches thick and this is 16, that's a difference of 8, meaning each side has 4 inches. So 4 inches. So what I can do here is I can start my line command. If I go to this corner and I move over to the right a little bit, I'll get object snap tracking. I can actually type in 4 inches and then it will start me 4 inches from that corner and I can go straight up. Well, my foundation wall is actually eight feet high. So I can actually go ahead and I always want to make sure I double check this. You know, we're going to copy this. So I'm going to move right down here and I have eight feet. Using the tools of Inventor, I will offset eight inches. I can go ahead and I can close up my top there and so now I have my foundation my footing and my foundation wall ready to go uh, lastly I'll put a few other things in here you can see here that a lot of my corners here are just open I just kind of you know I, I didn't stop them I didn't go for the full over the full length of the house uh, or I went a little bit past it you know doesn't particularly matter but I know I'm gonna draw this out Don't have to be that far and my concrete slab is four inches so I'm gonna go ahead and offset my concrete slab bottom four inches and then extend over my concrete slab right there so now I have my footing my foundation wall and my concrete slab like I said I'm just drawing basic here you can see that I use hatch uh, hatch patterns over here and I have not put any of my hatch patterns in yet uh, finally, let's see here, I'm going to go ahead and look at my drain tile. So I'm going to draw my drain tile. My drain tile has a diameter of 4 inches. So I'm going to go over, grab my circle. I can go center diameter, make this easier for myself. And I'm going to draw 4 inches, 2 of those for each side, the inside and the outside of the house. So there's my drain tile. I can move this over to make it look a little better. And so there's my drain tile. And then lastly, I'm going to go ahead and this little area right here is my pea gravel like I just talked about. This is going to be all underneath this, but I don't have to do that whole thing as that, just, that gets a little tedious. So instead, I'm just going to use a spline line and I'm going to go from the bottom here and kind of go just around a little bit and back up. And that is going to be my pea gravel here. Oh, I'm going to have to redo that.
All right, and there's my P grava. I'll be able to hatch that in. So here's your tutorial to start your, uh, your typical wall section, and we'll finish it up on the next video.